Have you ever been curious why the robotics engineers and researchers read and write these boring academic papers? Although it's super fun to drive this kind of RC car, the researchers and engineers are often just play with the simulation. If you have been following this channel, you probably know that the robotics engineering isn't just simply about fastening bolts and nuts of the robot or connecting the wires. Instead, it's about developing an algorithm for the specific robot. And the algorithm should consider the dynamics of the robot. And if you have programming experiences, we often encounter lots of compiler errors or runtime errors. And for robotics engineers, the penalty for runtime error can be very heavy. So oftentimes, we just use a simulation to test the algorithm first before testing it with the actual robots. So in this video, let me introduce a couple of simulations that you can test your algorithms right away. And if you're new to here, my name is Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer, educator, and entrepreneur providing related services. First, the dynamics of a robot is kind of like a roller coaster. What I mean by that, let's say you are building an autonomous airplane and your robot it has 6 degrees of freedom, which allows the robot to linearly move around XYZ axis at the same time rotate in the 3D space. However, certainly the airplane is not just going to teleport from one point to another point. Instead, the airplane follows its aerodynamic forces, gravity, and moment of inertia. And these forces are like roller coaster rails. Even if an object is free falling, it has to follow the physics of this universe, especially the gravitational acceleration of the planet Earth. And in a way, a good thing about robotics field is that we don't have to worry about the quantum physics at least. So you can definitely predict your robot's position at next time frame using good old fashioned Newtonian mechanics. So it's pretty good enough to test out your first robot algorithms with the physics engine. And there are many game engines based on pretty good physics engine. So let's talk about AirSim, the drone simulator by Microsoft first. AirSim is used to manage by Microsoft until 2022. They shut down this project and fired about 100 people related to this project. However, it is still a good project if you are working on the visual navigation algorithms. It has various weather effects like wind and seasons. I have also used image data from it for my master's thesis some years ago. The graphics quality is awesome and it returns the consistent quality of the images. So let's see how you can get this on your side as well. Just type GitHub Microsoft AirSim. And then this is the open source and then first I thought I have to install all these, but you don't have to actually to get started. Just go to release here and then you can just simply download one of these environments. And then for this video, I just download NH. This is neighborhood environment, which is the same. But if you are curious about some other uh, fun environments, you can just download one of these environments. And then you'll have this kind of folder after extracting it and then open it, go to Windows No Ed Editor. And then there is airseam.exe if you're on Windows, and then you can just run this. However, if it is first time to run it, it's going to open the window as a full window, and then there's no uh, windowed mode for the game. So if you want to use a windowed mode of this game, you can just open up a PowerShell, and then you just run this exe file here, and then have some arguments like this, that it's going to open up the window with this resolution. Type it, enter. Then there's new window coming out like this. Then, as you can see, there are not much control because you need to use a Python to move around this. And before we talk about the Python to control this, if you type F10 in this window, you can actually have this settings panel and then enable weather effect. If you want to increase rain and something like this, you can give some weather effect like this and apply all. And then there's now wind and then snow and falling leaves like this so let me try this and then rain and snow together is really cool and then a little bit of fog as well let me see this so because these graphics are pretty good so it's suitable to test out your say uh, visual navigation algorithm like object detections and measuring the velocity from your cameras and so on also if you want to see the image from the onboard camera of this drone you can type from your keyboard, one, two, three. And then, then the simulation will show you these uh, processed images like this, and then you can actually save it by pressing R. Then recording started, as you can see on, on the left-hand side, left top, and then if you want to stop the recording, you can type R again. 
that it will stop. And then as you can see, there's a path to this uh, file. So if I open up that path, it looks like this. And then there is this folder that in the task file there, there's a bunch of positions and uh, timestamp and all that. And then corresponding images are saved here. So if I move this by arrow keys, the windows will load the next images automatically. And then using these all images, you can do whatever visual processing using convolutional neural networks and so on. So you might be asking, hey Elliot, what's this settings, right? This settings file is just like this. And then you can actually give a default load setting for this game. The main reason I use the settings for AirSim is because of this the image type. So whenever I capture and save the image like this, I just want to use this size of the image. Now let me untoggle this. And if you want to run this simulation with Python, you can just open up a Python. And the first thing you need to do is installing PIP AirSim. And that's all you need to install. And I have already installed this, so I'm not going to run this again. And then this is the default script that I got from the from their website like this. Now let me run this Python main rsim.py. Just running this and then it will take off by itself and then it will move to the point as this Python code says. So first it went up like X, Y, Z. Like Z is downward, so it goes up first and then it will navigate to this position. So that's Okay, let me uh, try to do this. So yeah, that's the position. And then until this drone is reaching to this point, it will just keep moving to that part. And then as you can see, the data must be collecting like this and then onboard camera is like this. So this is how you can collect the data, like image data, and then do whatever you gotta do for your autonomous navigation algorithm. Now, the AirSim is pretty good simulation. If you're working on the visual navigation projects, However, uh, if you want to focus a little bit more onto the um, controller part, it's limited because as you can see, the API is pretty high level. So it doesn't really give us the control. There is no API that allows us to control uh, each Morse RPM of this drone. So let's talk about another simulation. So I have been developing a new simulation called Virtual Robots by Ubicoders, which is one of my services. And these virtual robots are free on the web at the moment. And I'm using this for education purpose exclusively in my courses. But let me know how you think about the simulation and share your thoughts in the comment section where the simulation can go in the future. Now, to get started with the virtual robots, all you need is just a web browser. And then there are six versions of different virtual robots, but for now, let's just click this multi-rotor in the center top. So what's so special about this? So the best feature I like is this. So enable keyboard and I will type this control that RV sign or just toggle this then there is a terminal then you can control then you can give some command immediately directly to this robot so if i want to create a new robot for example i can type create and then there is a command the recommendation there and then just type tap and i can create multi-rotor at 50 150 at 2 there, where is my new multi-rotor is. Then if I go back to my first multi-rotor like this, and then its position is at 50, 180. So let me create at that another multi-rotor at that position. So that's my new multi-rotor there. And you can see, now as you can see, that's my first multi-rotor and so on. So there are a bunch of comments that you can give direct command to these robots. And then I'm still developing this and then there will be more and more as we go. Now, another fun thing about this uh, virtual robot on the web is that you can also create a uh, different type of robots than just multi-rotors. If I want to create, say, OM Rover, which is for only directional mobile rover, and then I'll create that at the maybe same location like this. So that's my OM rover. And if I want to move around, I can just click these things. And that, as you can see, this is the indicator of the RPM direction for each motors. This omnidirectional rover has mechanical wheels, so it simulates the same dynamics like that. Helicopter this time, create we robots heli at, I don't know, 150, 150, and altitude is two. And that's my helicopter. If you want to control this, Turn on manual and then increase the collective pitch angle of this helicopter. However, because of torque from the main rotor, you need to compensate this torque using this tail rotor's RPM. And then it's really challenging to do this in this 
interface because this is not the game. Instead, uh, I developed it so that we can learn how to implement the controller algorithm in Python. So let me refresh this page for now. So to get started with Python, you can go down here, click tutorial. There's actually a GitHub repo link here. And if you go there, you can also download this template codes like this. Then the first thing you need to do is just like AirSim, you need to install this vRobots for virtual robots. And I have already installed this. And then the next thing that we need to do is running this bridge server. Python start bridge. And then this will run this bridge server and on your local computer. And then go up there, click connect. As long as you see this green light, it means the simulation now recognizes this server. Then that's it. And then you can run this free R template. So let's just try to uh, run this free R template code, which is the base code that can run the controller algorithm here. By the way, this free R template has kind of like structure like Arduino, like in it, the constructor of this class is kind of like a setup in Arduino. And then loop is the function that will be called every iteration of this simulation. And, and as you can see, so you can print this timestamp from the state. State is coming from freer.states, which is this simulation. And then you can just print the time uh, timestamp like this. And at the end, this command is sending the command literally to this system ID with the zero, which is this one. And then I'm just giving the PWM, which is just RPM of this, each of the four motors in this quad order. So let's just run this. And then if you notice, by the way, uh, the main function is just boiler template code, and then you can control these numbers so that you can define how many seconds that you want to run the simulation. So for now, let's just keep it as five and toggle this, run Python VR. And soon, this drone in the simulation will take off slowly. Once you toggle the noise, the drone cannot balance at all because if there, there is no sensor fusion algorithm or PID controller algorithm. Like I said, the runtime errors in the robotics field can be quite critical in some situations. Therefore, lots of engineers try out some simulations first. So far, I haven't seen a good simulation for a control algorithm test. Either the engineers had to use a MATLAB or Simulink or develop their own physics model, or the system. So ROS offers some simulation tools and languages like URDF, but it requires knowledge of ROS first. So I thought using this kind of off-the-shelf simulation from a web browser can be a powerful tool for some cases. Let me know how you think, like where this simulation should go in the future or any ideas or thoughts. And in the next video, let me talk about using AI in robotics project. If you like this kind of video, like always, please like and subscribe this video and this channel. I'm Elliot, I'll see you around.